Chaos Hopper here. Welcome to the Cliffside Bunker in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And this is part two of a mini series that I'm shooting footage of, basically just chronicling all the steps it took to come up with my new custom accidentalized game table I'm calling Omaha Beach. And this I'm calling The Middle, this episode The Middle. And we will be working in the middle of the table and not just the top, but we're going to flip it and we're going to start working on putting some legs on this sucker. So you can see that I have started to put hardware in the frame. Take a look at the edges there. We ended the last episode with the framing, but it was not fastened in. So you can see how we did that. Now that's a lot of hardware. I didn't want anything moving. And they're just brackets. You can get them at the home su building supply store. I got everything at Home Depot so far. So you can see how this one here, I did not want to put a bracket on the inside of the tray. Didn't want that lifting at all. Certainly didn't want to put a bracket on the inside of the dice tray where a dice could be obstructed. So I measured straight down the middle with a, with a little mark in the bottom of the table. And then I used a measuring tape and I put two screws from the bottom coming up. So those do not have brackets, but they have two screws from the bottom of the table coming up to fasten them in. And I even put a screw in the bottom in the center of this, even though the brackets are here to fasten it. I didn't want, again, any lift coming on this edge, like gaps, because the brackets are on this side, not on this side, might get that gap. So now we created a bit of a level with these brackets, this hardware. And take a look here, we put one in the center, just connecting. Remember, we're building on top of a plywood sheet, eight by four that was cut into two pieces of four by four. So when we have the opportunity to put a joiner fasten in here that can stay not temporary, then that's good. We're going to do that. So you can see that the screws and the bracket, even though it's slight, created a little bit of a level. So I'm going to go overkill and I'm going to put down another piece of MDF board going to show you what that looks like right now. Okay guys, I just put down my piece of MDF board and what the goal is, we're going to try and hide as much of this hardware as possible. Now, obviously we put it down, but we can still see the hardware. I'm going to try to explain much of my thinking behind this. So, I told you that these brackets created a bit of a level coming up from that surface. And then also too, these, these screws protrude upward as well. So I got an MDF board to place in the center to have that nice level that's going to be flush. And the next piece we put on the last piece in the center that's going to act as our playing surface will be able to go right over all of this stuff. So this creates a level where the next sheet sits on and is actually larger than this piece and goes right over all this. So that's my thinking. You can see that I got this piece of MDF board cut a couple of inches shorter. then ultimately the big piece we're going to put on which is going to go flush straight to the frame 
Now you can see that I've started to put all these little holes. Now I did glue down this piece of MDF. So this piece of MDF and this one are both glued down. This one on top of this with carpenter's glue. However, now that we know that the next piece is going to be the playing surface piece of wood, we can go ahead and we can fasten all of this together. We're gonna to screw it together using one inch. Now, when I'm buying screws, I always just make sure, make sure by eyeballing it, I mean, Obviously this is three quarter. Now we got another piece of MDF there. Okay. But we also have this piece of MDF. So this screw should not go through all the way, but it will go through most of it to fasten everything really nicely. Now I started all these pre-drilled holes to make these go in easier because it's not easy to drill into MDF without the without the starter holes the pre-drilled holes and you can see the drill bit I use very tiny not a lot is needed to get started it's going to make putting these screws in much much easier you don't have to do this with every screw that you put in but sometimes it's good like for example here and here so we're gonna have some screws. Nobody's gonna see this surface. Again, one last middle piece of wood to go over top of all of this. And it's gonna hide all that hardware that's fastening the frame together. Just a little something about this drill. Um, the battery is low. I have to charge it almost every every 15 minutes I use it. I really wanted to use this drill even though I could have borrowed a friend's drill which was much more powerful. But I've built two tables in the past. Um, my very, very first back in 2011 and another one in 2004 I believe. 2003, 2004, I'm sorry, 2014. <laughs> um, so I really wanted to build this last table using the same drill that I've always used to build my table. So, um, all right, I'm gonna fasten these in and then I'm gonna take these trays out. You remember this nice smooth piece of laminate? So you can see how the thinking behind that now, right? Nice, beautiful piece of laminate underneath the trays. Keep everything nice and clean. No plywood for slivers. All right. And then we're going to flip the table on its back, guys. Uh, we're not gonna put down our playing surface piece of wood. I'm still debating whether or not I wanna stain that last piece, I might. Um, but it's not important right now. After I fasten in the MDF board and take out all the trays, we're gonna flip it and we're gonna start working on the bottom of the table. Be right back. All right, everybody, in the last clip, I said that I was gonna flip the table, work on the bottom, work on the legs, but the Home Depot didn't have some of the hardware I needed. So I'm gonna delay that process. And while I was there, I decided to get something at least for my trip and I got the middle part. Remember in the last clip, I explained that I was going to hide the hardware from the frame by adding yet another piece, a last piece in the center. Well, this is it. It's maple, it's smooth, a little bit more expensive than regular plywood, all right? It's a smooth surface. So I glued it down, I fastened it in, and I have fastened the frame 
So the only thing left to do now is to stain it. Yep, maple, smooth maple. I'm gonna stain that, make that the same color as the rest of the table. Now, I did fasten it down, mind you, only with one screw in each corner. So four screws and one in the middle. The reason being is you don't want a loose piece of wood like that in the center that might warp you know and then we got an anniversary edition board situation <laughs> um so i did fasten it down only with five screws total though um just to prevent warping i'm gonna go ahead and stain this so the center top is gonna look like the rest of the table the banks and everything now i had to fit it in there just perfect like and I am very happy overall with how things are going. You're gonna have a few little things, like I said, I mean, a couple millimeters is gonna create little flaws like this, but you know what? Every custom hand built anything is gonna have a few flaws that you can just look at and say, well, that's why it's handmade, right? human error a little bit, trying to minimize it, but fact is my table has a few flaws that I'm fine with. All right, so gonna stain this. Really weird, interesting thing about this piece of maple I picked up from Home Depot. Got it cut as close as I could, and we're transporting it over here and right away in the car it had a fish smell like i've been fishing lots of times this was definitely a fish smell like it was either stored in a container or had something spilt on it or something but this is a fishy piece of wood <laughs> so yeah kind of reminds me of when i was a kid uh fishing for bass on the remote lakes here in ontario canada but um, interesting. So all kinds of interesting things. I have stories like that with every table I've built in the past. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Uh, maybe it's, uh, appropriate to call this Omaha beach, uh, because of the fish smell. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to stain this. I'll give you another shot of how it looks after it's stained. Then we got to go ahead, flip it the legs cheers all right everybody so the tabletop is done I'm very happy with it I stained that middle piece nice consistent colors of the wood throughout the whole tabletop now it's possible or I would say probable that I sand and stain all these wooden trays um, that's gonna be something that will take a lot of time so that might be the last thing I do, the last thing. We're still gonna fill them up with plastic pieces for now and everything. But the tabletop, I would say, is done. Now, I will install some abacuses on the table. Anybody familiar with my old table? I had an abacus at each end for counting casualties as we roll them in the dice tray. So that's definitely something that we're gonna install on this table, but... Um, Right now it's time to flip it and start with the legs and the base. And right now I've got it on milk crates. I'm even higher now because my buddy Pink Panzer is gonna come over. We're going to have the first game on this tabletop. I promised him a game, we're gonna have a one-on-one. -on -one. And at the end of that game, he's gonna help me flip this massive heavy beast, flip it on its back so I can work on it this week. All right, so very happy with the tabletop. In regards to these trays, I had a fellow that I knew that worked in his garage doing stuff like that with wood and I asked him if he could make me some trays and he did, that was a while ago. He charged me 10 bucks per tray, it's fine. Um, a little steep, but um, I liked them a lot. I was very specific in the size. So each of these wooden trays individually is the exact same dimensions as your anniversary edition trays. 
the cardboard boxes in your anniversary edition same dimensions and they all you can see that they all fit very very snug and perfect so even if I don't decide to go with the wooden trays for whatever reason um, the anniversary edition cardboard divided trays will fit perfectly just like these so I do not know that gentleman anymore um, anybody asking for those but you know if you go to a flea market or something you see somebody doing some uh, custom woodwork you know um, maybe show them a picture of one of my trays see if that's uh, something that they could do if you really really want custom handmade wooden trays like these I the only reason why I did it is for the dimensions to fit perfectly um, in my table very difficult to just go out there and find something that magically just has the right dimensions to to fit in a table 8x4 perfectly like this so I spent the money to do it for those that are asking about the trays all right guys be right back next clip you see this guy will be on his back Cheers. all right so here we go Omaha Beach has been flipped on her back my good friend Pink Panzer came over and helped me with that um, this is very heavy I don't recommend anybody trying to flip something this heavy this large on their own so you can see here all the screws now from the bottom all the screws fastening the banks all the screws fastening the frame so obviously this is the bottom we don't care how it looks we're not going to stain it of course now we're going to put our base structure our legs we need to build our legs and i've got some hardware over here i'm going to show you guys what my plan is with this stuff now obviously you could build just the tabletop itself and go out there and get a used table very strong used table maybe six feet long even though this is eight feet it could fit on top and you know act as your foundation your base you want to make sure whatever you put something like this on that it's sturdy enough to hold the weight but we are going to hand craft the table from the bottom up and i've got here another piece of plywood three quarter thick we're going to add more weight to support the weight if that makes sense so i'll show you what that looks like once i place it on first thing i'm going to do though is i'm going to Remember in the first video, we put these fasteners because we got two pieces here. We wanted to keep them together. We're going to take these out now because, of course, we got the banks that fasten all this together. We're going to take these out. But because my next sheet is smaller than the 8x4, we can go ahead and put this and fasten it over here. More overkill. To make sure that our two pieces of 4x4 four four never ever come apart. And of course, with what we've done with the table so far on the top, should never come apart anyway. Especially when we now fasten this next piece, this next middle piece into the bottom. Okay, be right back. So, okay, we are ready to start fastening. So just like in the very first video, one of the very first clips what we did was we laid out everything the banks the trays the carpet mats we laid it all out first trying to find out our measurements before we fastened anything down it's kind of like what i'm doing here guys so i got a lot of stuff i want to show you in this clip um first and foremost the piece in the center that i was explaining to you in the last clip we've gone ahead and measured that and put that on you can see it's a three quarter inch piece and i meticulously went around all the edges there 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 
there, measured, walked around, measured, walked around, measured, making sure that this piece was as centered as possible. And once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and just put some screws in the center, just in the center. So one, two, three, four, just down the center, just so it doesn't move. It's not uh, glued or anything. All right, so that's not gonna move. Now these here are four by four fence post brackets. Okay, they're going to act as an insert or a support for our four by four wooden legs. Now, again, we haven't fastened anything. I'm gonna use this as a bit of a level, all right? I have here some handles. Just my experience from the last table I built or the last couple tables, moving that thing around, sliding it around, um, proved to be quite difficult using my hip to push the table. So this time I am putting down some handles so I can just reach under the table, grab it and just walk it and pull it. So I'm doing that at this end and at that end, it's gonna be easy to move it around obviously on the feet, we are gonna have sliders. So here we have the four by four banks or legs. And then here we have some very thick sliders. So on this laminate floor, this table should slide very easily, but it is heavy. So we've got some handles to help us, okay? Now, when it comes to screwing in these particular brackets, it's not as simple as just putting a screw down. Take a look at the size of the hole, the size of the hole there. My lighting's not the best. Uh, I haven't put up a light yet, and the lighting that came with the apartment is not going to be sufficient for videos or gaming, so there is a light coming but um, just want to show you the size of those. And we're going to use our drill and we're going to make a pilot hole. Now we don't want the drill bit to be too large, but this is what we're going to be using. Take a look there. So we've got a screw, washer, large washer, smaller washer, and we construct it like this. Okay. Now the end on that is going to require a socket wrench. So once we put our pilot hole in, we go ahead and try and screw that in as far as we can with our hand. And then we get our ratchet and we crank it. Four per bracket. Now all this is laid down loose. Want to make sure that these brackets are even and aligned it's going to matter when we put our posts in whenever going down and getting wood like this guys always always check check look right down make sure that it's as straight as possible when looking for knotted pine especially the banks and these little quarter inch pieces i mean a lot of them look like boomerangs you got to be careful you don't want any warping or as very, very little as possible um, because um, your table is going to have stress when you screw it all down and um, you don't want to be dealing with curvatures in your wood while you're building your table. So I think uh, I explained all the steps of the process. Now, when it comes to all this hardware and whatnot, I'm getting everything from Home Depot. Now, I will provide a link in the description box of this video, sending you to a forum thread at axenallies.org, where I will be listing all the pieces and materials and tools that I've used and the cost of those things. Now, if it's not there or if the link just says coming soon it means it's too early i'm not finished it but um if it's a month or two months after me uploading these videos then it should definitely be there so just be patient with me guys 
So these brackets may not be enough. All right, my good friend, absolutely war torn, gave me some advice about putting some joiner brackets, basically a two by four with a 45 degree cut, you know, just to help support it, um, not to rely solely on these brackets. Now, obviously you can see the holes that are on the inside there. Once the four by four goes in, we're gonna put that many screws through the four by four once the brackets are fastened. But we're also gonna take his advice. He's uh, got a lot of experience. He's been working on renovating his basement for well over 12 years now. So he must be very experienced. <laughs> Sorry buddy, I just had to say that. No, he's a, a great guy. He's just uh, very busy uh, being a firefighter and saving the city. So. Obviously he can't get to his basement as much as he'd like to, but it is COVID. It is COVID season, maybe. With the isolation, he can finally get that done. But I'm gonna take his good advice and put those wood joiners, those 45 degree joiners in later after we flip it back on its table. Okay guys, be right back. Hey guys, just a little clip, a little tutorial here. I wanted to show you what I'm going through when it comes to fastening in these brackets, if this is the way you decide to go. Um, so I'm making sure that my bracket is flush with the corners using a little device here to make sure it's level or aligned with the other brackets at the end of the table. I'm gonna put either marks or pen marks or just go ahead and put a little drill hole in the center there, just a little pilot little pilot starter hole. Now you want to make sure that your drill bit is not longer than the screw itself if possible. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a drill bit that is not longer than the screw and I'll show you why. So once we drill a little pilot hole, we're going to take this off and I always have dust off available and I get rid of that debris. All right, now, now that the bracket's off, we got our pilot holes. We want to send this pilot hole straight through the other piece, all the way down. All the way down. We want to get into this piece. This is what I want to show you that's important. So we're going to put this back and we're going to start putting our screws in the holes. Now we're going to start off with something manual, hand, so we can get the, get it started. Okay, it's got a little socket end there. And then once we get them halfway, we're gonna crank them with these because they get really tight and you gotta really reef and crank. You won't be able to do it with this all the way down. Now the reason why I wanted to show you this is because we wanna make sure that pilot hole goes straight through to the other piece. Now, if you don't do that, the tip of this bolt, once you're screwing down and it reaches this, it's now got to start and use the tip of the screw to create its own hole. And what's that going to do? Is it going to bring up all this wood debris and it's going to create a gap and it's going to rise. It's going to raise this. And because of all the debris underneath this piece and between this piece, um, you'll have to get that cleaned out if you ever want this to be flush with this. So the pilot hole really helps. All right. And I'll just show you what it looks like there when they're fastened in nice and tight. And that board, this board here does not rise from this board creating that gap. And I always make sure I clean off as much of the shrapnel from the wood as possible. Just a little tip when you're bringing in these brackets. Thanks, cheers. All right, guys, so we've made some great progress and let's take a look. I'll show you what I've done. So I screwed those handles into the bottom of the table. That's gonna be so easy for me to just move the whole table myself around the room. I can just pull on those handles. And of course I have laminate tiles, so so to protect scratches, we've got a slider, very thick slider. We don't need to put this or fasten this at all. The weight of the table on the floor is going to keep that in place. We've got our four by four 
wooden posts from my old table. Glad that I'm using something from my old table onto my new table. I have fastened it into these fence post brackets. So the same four on the other side. So this is very, very, very solid. And of course our bracket fastened into this three quarter inch plywood. Reason why we went an extra three quarter inch plywood on top of this one is because we needed some heavy duty wood screw bolts that um, it's just better durability to be able to go through that depth. So we're creating the depth for these two to hold this and this all in place. So now I am going to take War Torn suggestion and do a 45 degree brace going this way and again going that way. So even more support, the reason being as well is because you can never be too safe, but I'm only going with four legs. I've decided I'm only going with four legs. So the entire weight of the table will need to be on four legs. Now, besides the two braces for each leg, I'm gonna go and put a board across this way and across this way and I'm going to build a frame and I'm going to frame these legs and fasten them in together. It's just going to help limit any movement but like I said these are already in there really solid. Really solid. But I'm going to go overkill on the on the legs because I'm only going with four instead of six. I'm going to do those 45 degree angle braces. Again I got some some handles over here again if I want to move it from this end into a direction so that is the bottom guys that's the foundation so other than just those uh, braces and those boards going across to frame the legs I mean we're gonna do that and then we're gonna flip this I'm gonna need I think more than just one person to help me flip this super heavy quite the beast but beautiful piece of furniture that I can be proud of so that is the end of episode two. I'm doing a three part mini series chronicling all the steps it took to build my custom game table, Omaha Beach. And in the next episode, we're going to look at um, just the details and the last finishing touches, a couple of cosmetics and touches that just really complete the whole project. So thanks guys for being interested. Thanks for subscribing thanks for commenting and liking my videos and um may all your roles be ones we're getting close to the final stages of having my new custom game table in my new bunker very excited okay guys look out for part three the final episode and we will finish off this beautiful custom game table cheers